Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at several ways to seamlessly move images between Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. First, let's look at the Preferences. Now on Windows, this would be under the Edit menu, and I'll select External Editing. By default, Lightroom Classic is going to hand off the photo to the most current version of Photoshop as a TIFF file using the Pro Photo Color Space in 16-bit and at 240 ppi. If you prefer any other settings to be your default, you can change them here. When you select a different option, you'll see a tip explaining why that option is not the default. For example, if I choose the Photoshop PSD format, then Lightroom Classic lets me know that it might be less efficient with respect to metadata updates and that I would want to use the Maximize Compatibility option in Photoshop. I'll go ahead and change that back to TIFF. Or you might prefer to hand off files to Photoshop in a smaller color space than the Pro Photo, or in a smaller bit depth to keep the file size down. Because I typically take my images into Photoshop to continue editing, I'm going to leave these set to the larger color space and the higher bit depth so that I have the most information in the file when I make changes to color and tone. By default, Lightroom Classic stacks the externally edited files with the originals, but I prefer to leave them unstacked, so I'll uncheck Stack with Original. And instead of appending the file name with the dash edit, which is the default, we can see that if I choose edit, I've created my own file naming template preset, which retains the original file name and then adds an underscore ME for master edited. All right, let's cancel that and then I'll close the preferences. Now let's assume that I've made all of the changes that I want to this photo and I wanna continue editing in Photoshop. I'll choose photo and then edit in. I can choose between opening the photo in Photoshop Beta or another version of Photoshop if I have multiple versions installed. Both of these options will create or render and hand off a new document with all of the changes that you've made as a pixel-based file into Photoshop. Now we can continue editing. I'll tap C to select the Crop tool and set the fill to Generative Expand. Then I'll reposition the image a bit higher in the crop and click the check in order to apply it, and I'll click Generate without entering a prompt. Now we could be adding text or shapes, but for now I just want to create a multi-layered document. I'll go ahead and select the variation that I like best, and then choose File and Save. Notice that I'm selecting Save and not Save As. That's because Lightroom Classic is only aware of the file that it handed off to Photoshop, and that's the file that it's waiting for Photoshop to return to it so that it can auto-import it. If we choose Save As or Save a Copy, that will save a derivative of the file that Lightroom Classic won't know about. Now we can always choose to save off a derivative and then import it, but that's just another step. When I choose File and then Close, Photoshop will hand back the saved file to Lightroom Classic. Now we can see both versions of the file the original raw DNG file and the new TIFF file. If you don't see both of the files, try setting the sort order to file name or capture time. It could be that you're sorting by something else and Lightroom Classic may have added the file to the end of the grid view. Also, when moving files between Lightroom Classic and Photoshop, you'll wanna make sure that you leave Lightroom Classic open. If you quit Lightroom Classic while you're editing your file in Photoshop, then Lightroom Classic won't be there to auto-import the TIFF file or Photoshop file when Photoshop tries to hand it back. Again, you can always import the new file, but it's an extra step. If we want to reopen this layered TIFF file, we can choose Photo, and then Edit In, and select Photoshop. I'll select Edit Original to edit the layered TIFF file. If I choose Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments, Lightroom Classic will have to flatten the layers to apply the adjustments. And if I choose Edit a Copy, I'll have another copy of the layered TIFF file, which I don't need. We can see that all of the layers are intact, and we could continue editing, but for the sake of time, I'll just close the file and then return to Lightroom Classic. All right, if we want to open multiple images at once into Photoshop, we can select the images and then choose Photo, edit in and choose Photoshop, then they will all be opened as individual files. If I want to open multiple files into the same document, then we can choose open as layers in Photoshop. 
In the Layers panel, we can see the two layers, and we can see that Photoshop has named the layers the name of the original image. This is the layer that has the ice that I want, and this is the layer that has the clean background. I'll select the Object Selection tool and quickly drag the lasso around the ice in the foreground. Photoshop will shrink the selection to the object, and then we can click the Add Layer Mask icon in order to hide the messy ice in the lagoon and reveal the clean photo of the lagoon in the layer below. Then I'll choose File and Save, and then File and Close. All right, let's return to Lightroom Classic, and there is our new multi-layered TIFF file. Next, I'll select this image. If you have other settings that you often use when you're opening files, you can create a preset. I'll return to the Preferences, and then External Editing, and I'll click to choose the application that I want to open the files into. In this case, I want to use the Photoshop Beta, and then I'll click Choose. And because I want to use Photoshop and not another editor, I'll choose Use Anyway. I'll change the format to PSD and choose a smaller color space. Then I'll choose to save the current settings as a new preset, and I'll name the preset, and then click Create, and we can close this. Now when we return to the Photo menu and choose Edit In, we can select the preset from the list. Now I'm seeing a version warning dialog that you may or may not see, but I'll choose to open an Adobe Photoshop beta. And here it is in Photoshop. We can see in the lower left in the status bar that the file is in the Adobe RGB color space. And if we choose File and then Save, we can see that it was saved as a Photoshop file in the title bar. All right, moving back to Lightroom, let's select these next two files and choose Photo, and then Edit In, and let's talk about opening files as smart objects. So selecting Open as Smart Object in Photoshop will open these files as smart objects into individual files. If I choose Open as Smart Object Layers, then they'll be opened into a single document. When we choose to open as smart objects, Lightroom Classic makes duplicates of the original RAW files and hands them off to Photoshop. So we still have the original in Lightroom Classic, and now we have a new document in Photoshop that contains copies of the raw files. And we can make changes to both of them independently from one another. In the Layers panel, we can see the icon for the smart objects. I'll drag this top layer down to change the stacking order, and then select the top layer. I'll select the Object Selection tool by tapping the W key, and I'll drag around the ice and its reflection. Photoshop will shrink wrap that selection to the ice and its reflection, and then we can click the Add Layer Mask icon to add a mask. So there are several benefits to working with smart objects. First, we can select the smart objects thumbnail in a layers panel, and we can choose Edit, and then Free Transform, and we can resize this smart object to make it really small. I'll go ahead and click the check to apply that. And then if we change our mind, we can return to the edit menu and choose free transform again and resize the image up. And when I apply this, we didn't lose any image quality because the copy of the entire raw file has been embedded within this document. Second, if I select this smart object layer, I can choose layer, smart objects, and edit contents. This will open the contents of the smart object into Camera Raw. Camera Raw uses the same technology that Lightroom Classic uses to edit files. So now we can make adjustments to the raw data inside of the layered file in Photoshop. I'll just decrease the exposure a bit and also increase the whites and then bring the color temperature towards blue. When I click OK, because we're working with the raw information, no matter how many times we make changes in Camera Raw, we're going to get the highest quality results possible. Now, it may not be obvious in this example, but when working with subtle gradients like in this photograph, if I was working with a pixel-based layer, we would most likely start to see banding when I make these kinds of changes. All right, let's choose File, and then Save, and then file again to close the file and return to Lightroom Classic. 
We can see our original raw files as well as the TIFF file with the raw files embedded within it. Excellent. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.